and welcome to a podcast from the Picture of Pain blog at the Dolotest website, dolotest.com. Today we're going to take a closer look at some of the mechanisms behind chronic pain. We're going to look at sensitization, both peripheral and central. We're going to take a closer look at allodynia and hyperalgesia, and at some of the factors closely connected with these. We're also going to take a brief look at fibromyalgia, but first of all, we will start with a fairy tale. Because in 1835, my world-famous countryman Hans Christian Andersen wrote a fairy tale with the title The Princess on the Pea. The fairy tale is known around the world, but in case you should have forgotten it or haven't heard it, I'll just give you a short recap. Like most fairy tales, it's about a prince and a princess. It's about a prince who desperately wants to find a real princess to marry. And one stormy night there was knocking on the door to the castle and the old king himself went to open the door. Out in the rain was standing a young woman, but she was in a terrible state from the rain and the storm. There was water running in at the top of her shoes and out of the heels, but she said that she was a real princess. To find out if that was true, the old queen went to the bedroom and took all the bedclothes off and laid a pea on the bedstead. Then she took 20 mattresses and piled them up on top of the pea and then 20 feather beds on top of the mattresses. This was where the princess was to sleep that night. In the morning they asked her how she slept. Oh, terribly bad, said the princess. I have hardly closed my eyes the whole night. I have such a pain in my back. Heaven knows what was in that bed. Now they knew that she was a real princess, and the prince and the princess got married, and they lived happily ever after. And the story ends now. This is a true story. Well, I'm not exactly sure about that, but it is interesting to see that to demonstrate that she is of high rank, that she is a real princess, the young woman has to show that she is very sensitive to pain. Not exactly the way living with pain is today, where it is often associated with a social downturning spiral and where persons living with pain are often met with disbelief and mistrust. But despite taking part of a fairy tale, what could be wrong with this young woman? Well, let's try to take a closer look at that. We'll do that by looking at the connection between increasing stimulus and increasing pain intensity and see how they respond to each other. If you take your right index finger and touches the skin of your left forearm with it, it will normally not cause pain. If you gradually increase the pressure from your finger, it still will not cause pain, pain until it reaches a certain point. You can see that the blue line at the graph. At that point, pain will start to occur, and if you still continue to increase the pressure from your finger, so will the pain you experience increase. This is what we call the normal response. But there are persons who experience pain for, from just a slight touch by a finger or a stroke by a feather or just some tissue touching the skin. And if that uh, stimulus increases, so will their experience of pain increase and they will often experience a higher level of pain from a given stimuli. Now, this is what we call sensitization. If we start by looking at the lower part of the graph, now you can see it as light red. This is where pain is experienced from something that normally does not cause pain. And this we call allodynia. Okay, so if we have a stimulus that normally cause some, cause some pain, like shown by the X mark, and you can see the corresponding pain response at the vertical axis. But there are persons who experience a higher intensity of pain than normal at this level of stimuli. And this, it's a green line, and this is what we call hyperalgesia. So sensitization is composed of both a peripheral part, allodynia, feeling pain for something that's not painful normally, and a central part, hyperalgesia, feeling of increased intensity of pain for a given stimuli. So, how can this occur? Well, let's take a look at the nerve cells, the neurons, and their supporting cells, the glia cells. Normally, the neurons are connected and com uh, communicating with each other with some neurotransmitters and often using interneurons. This is a normal way for the neurons to communicate and they are sending information upwards in the system towards the brain. But things can go wrong. 
If the glia cells and the interneurons become involved in this transmission of information, we have many cells spreading the information. Thereby, we have an amplification of the impulses of the response to pain. It could spread across the nerve system and thereby spread the experience of pain and it can amplify it and at the same time the neurons can lower their threshold for starting to transmit information about pain. So we have a very powerful system here increasing the intensity of pain, the experience in pain and spreading it. So we have a central or a peripheral sensitization. So actually we do know that chronic pain leads to chronic changes in the nervous system. Now, this is very important, but what is even more important is that research has shown us that early intervention reducing pain intensity and duration of pain can reduce this risk. So there is ever a good reason to start early with intervention on pain intensity, to reduce the duration of pain, to start pain management as early as possible. Well, you probably guessed it, it is even more complex than this. But stay with me as we take a closer look at some of the pathways and some of the factors regulating this traffic. So normally the response from the neurons, the information is sent upward toward the brain where we have the experience of pain. But at the same time there are some very powerful regulatory pathways regulating this traffic by sending information downwards from the brain. There's a reducing pathway and an increasing pathway. The reducing pathway is reducing pain intensity, the increasing pathway is increasing pain intensity. In the normal response, these two are in a tight balance, but when we have a sensitized system, these two are in imbalance. And the activities of these pathways are under influence by a lot of factors, but we'll take a look at some of the more important factors. Poor sleep quality has a negative impact of the activity in the reducing pathway, and thereby Poor sleep quality leads to higher experience of pain intensity. Actually, research has shown us that just one night with sleep interruptions can lead to experience of higher pain intensity for a, for a given stimuli the next day. At the same time, sleep is a very uh, important factor of health-related quality of life. So poor sleep quality and chronic pain are closely related. And so is mood problems. Multiple studies have showed a tight connection between depression and chronic pain. In the RESPECT trial, it was even concluded that it no longer makes sense to treat pain without considering depression, and it no longer makes sense to treat depression without considering pain. And like sleep, mood problems are very important in the health-related quality of life. And so is anxiety and worrying which, like sleep problems and depression, has a negative impact of the activity in the reducing system. So just information and feeling understood is actually more than just feeling understood and in, uh, information. It is actually part of the uh, treatment as it can reduce the experience of pain intensity. The activity of the reducing system can be uh, increased by serotonin and noradrenergic drugs reacting on specific receptors in the system. Likewise, the activity of the increasing system can be reduced by tricyclic antidepressant and drugs like gabapentin and pregabalin. So we have a very complex situation here. We have a system where we can have peripheral and central sensitization. We have amplification of the response from the cells by glia cells, interneurons, spreading the cell, the information, the transmission of uh, information about the pain sent to the brain, and thereby we have amplification, spreading of the pain, and increased sensitivity to pain. And these, again, are under influence by a lot of factors like poor sleep quality, depression, anxiety, worrying, and luckily we can do something with uh, pharmaceuticals to help this situation. Okay, time to go back to the princess on the pea and try to figure out what could be wrong with her. Now, I haven't tried it, but I guess it will not cause pain to lie on a bed with 20 mattresses and 20 feather beds with a pea beneath it. So 
it is not something that would normally cause pain and thereby her experience of pain is not a, an amplification of a normal pain response. It is not hyperalgesia. No, normally I would not expect this to cause pain, but for her it indeed re resulted in a very powerful pain response. So I guess she was suffering from allodynia. Now, this allodynia can come from many reasons. It could be a post hepatic neuralgia, some other kind of neuralgia. It can be following an injury, a wound, a burn injury, or whatever it might be. Could it be fibromyalgia? Well, fibromyalgia, which we will cover in a later edition of the Picture of Pain block, is a very complex situation. There is highly sensitization, both peripheral and central. There's hyperalgesia, there's allodynia, there's fatigue, there's mood problems, there's sleeping problems. There's almost all of it. So, yes, it might be. From the fairy tale, we don't know anything about how the things continue for the, the princess. All we know is that she lived happily ever after. So there was not focus on her pain, the intensity of her pain, there was focus on her quality of life, which is what is very important. If you want to learn more about Dolotest, please go to the Dolotest website at dolotest.com, where you can also find the picture of pain block. We would love to hear from you. You can send us a response on the picture of pain block, or you can connect with us and follow us on Twitter or Facebook, or you could simply write us an email that's at pictureofpain at dolotest.com.